I'm Mike Costello, and I'm here with Dr. Iris Freelander. And today, we'd like to share with you some concepts and ideas of using forgiveness in its healing form to deal with not only your spiritual self and your emotional self, but even touching upon the healing power of forgiveness as it relates to your physical body. Forgiveness is such a magnificent uh, tool for bringing about healing in our in our being, isn't it, Iris? Yes, I think it's one of the most important things we can do for ourselves and certainly for others, but for ourselves, because when we don't forgive, we have the darkness inside ourselves. It creates negativity, and the negativity creates the body's uh, problems. Mm -hmm. So it's lack of forgiveness that causes a lot of the illness in our lives, and it's also a lack of forgiveness that creates so much disharmony in the world. And what is there to forgive anyway? I mean, every, most people do the best they can. And if you have outright bandits who are deliberately trying to upset the apple cart, then that, so they're, that's their problem. And we don't need to take it on as part of our own. Right. I just think it's important for people to realize when we don't forgive, so often we think that so and so has, or so and so, I should not, not say such a thing, but a person has done something or said something uh, that's <laughs> been injurious or hurtful to us and that we can't ever forgive them. And of course, you, in your counseling and in my counseling, we talk with divorced and separated people all the time. And there are no more bitter people, <laughs> as you know, and we all know, than those who are unhappy in a personal relationship and especially a marriage that's gone bad. Yes. And that. It is so difficult often for people to let go, and they feel, and people feel that they want to and they must hold on. But when we hold on to anger and hurt, we're letting that come back and hurt us again, aren't we? <laughs> and it has no impact whatsoever upon the person that uh, has has harmed us. And yet we believe mistakenly that by holding on to it, we're continuing to damage them or to pay them back. But in fact, we're just hurting ourselves worse, aren't we? Exactly. And the doctors measure it in endorphins, the endorphin level. And when we're in, into any negativity, where there's forgiveness, and forgiveness is one of the mo most deadly, then our endorphin level goes down. And some people call the endorphins the joy connection, you can, the pleasure connection. You can call them whatever, but they're in a sense a, a measure of that you can measure how how healthy we are and, and how well we're going to recuperate because we're all going to face illness. But if we're negative about the illness, if we're negative about our lives, then we're not going to, our, our endorphin level is going to be low, our white blood, our um, immune system is not going to function properly. And so we're not going to regain our health the way we would if we were optimistic and hopeful and anticipate good, anticipating good. If we're holding the negativity, then we're then we're holding the darkness within us. Yeah, holding on to old hurts is yeah. a big problem we all have, isn't yes, it? Yeah. Yes. And if we hold on to old hurts, we're the one who is hurt most of all, because the person we're aiming that at does feel it in a sense, because we send out that energy, but not nearly as much. It's not nearly as detrimental to the person we're sending it to, as it is to ourselves. And at one time, there was a psychologist who told me to tell someone who was creating problems in my life, I'm going to throw that garbage right back at you. But you know, and I said it at the time, but not with much conviction, because I learned later, and it came to me very clearly, that we don't want to send the garbage back to anyone. We want to transmute it. Mm -hmm. So if we can, whatever people are sending to us in a negative way, if we if we just don't let it, if we it's not exactly deflecting it, it's transmuting it. Mm -hmm. And so if we give understanding, love, and light to that circumstance, then we're going to be transmuting that energy. Because everything is energy. You teach that so beautifully, that everything is energy, everything is vibration. And so we can use the energy in a negative way, or we can use it in a positive way. But if we know that as we forgive or don't forgive, we are creating a specific energy, then we're more prone to do the right thing, aren't we? we to are. do the positive. We are. And as we forgive, then we open uh, so many aspects of ourselves up to, to the healing process. Yes. Because then we, we stop the damage that's being done yes. and we begin the rebuilding, we begin <laughs> the healing. And of course, the healing from an emotional standpoint has an impact upon our mental health and upon our physical health. Totally. Totally, and very often that's why people do get sick. Not always. It's not 
it's, there's various reasons. But if anyone is unforgiving and harsh in their outlook to life for a very long period of time, it's going to show in their physical body one way or another. And there are those many wonderful spiritual teachers who have made a study of it and have found that a certain uh, energy that we send out, where there's lack of forgiveness or whatever it is, will impact in a specific part of the body. And they've shown that over and over that's happened. Louise Hay has done a very great uh, work in that way of showing what part of the body is impacted over a specific disappointment or negativity in life. Mm -hmm. And this lack of forgiveness then can manifest itself in horrible physical ways. Exactly, and does. Yes. So we, we, keep our, we can keep our own bodies healthy if we, if we forgive. And you know, if we look at life overall, it's easy to forgive because most people, as I said earlier, don't know what they're really doing. They don't know any better. And if they do deliberately do something, then it's their problem and it's truly a big problem for them. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to take that problem on. We can just march along to our own drummer. Right. And having that understanding and realization <laughs> that most people are doing the best that they can and that those who have hurt us or who have caused harm to us, uh, in many cases, do it because uh, they've been injured themselves. Yeah. And a lot of times in our counseling, we find that people have uh, uh, hurts and uh, difficulties that they can't let go of that relate to their childhood, their parents, <laughs> poor parents. You know, and from a psychological standpoint, we hear have hear a lot of jokes about how much we put upon the parents. You know, everything is caused in childhood, and certainly a lot is caused in life in general. But uh, so often, people have feelings about their parents and their childhood and their upbringing, and they hold on to those things. And as they hold on to them, they cheat themselves out of so much, including the relationship that they could have had or should have with a parent, and even a parent that's been long dead and gone. Yeah. And I'm reminded of a lady, and you would remember her, but we obviously won't name, don't want to name <laughs> anyone, but who was in our church for many years, and was uh, quite an elderly woman, and uh, she had a difficulty with her mother because her mother had ended a relationship that she had wanted very badly with a young man when she was a young, <laughs> this was when she was 18 or 20 years old. And uh, when I met her, she was in well into her 70s, and she lived in our church until she died in her 80s. And out to her dying day, she shared with me at every opportunity <laughs> the damage that her mother did. And uh, we constantly worked with her on the, the importance and the value of letting go of that. And one of the things that I said when we did a memorial for her was that it was wonderful that now she and her mother were face to face <clears throat> and they were able to resolve the difficulties and they were able to both move on. But so often it is that lack of forgiveness that holds us. And in her case, it held her from so many things. It held her from resolving the problems that she really, fundamental problems she had with her mother. It, it allowed her to continue to rehash this hurt feeling. It allowed her to, to look at things that might have been and to bring up regrets for a whole lifetime. Nothing, nothing very good came of that. And so the forgiveness that can come can free us, and sometimes it can free us from decades of difficulty. Mm -hmm. It would have impacted on every aspect of her life, wouldn't it? Because it was so strong in her. That's, uh, that's really unusual, isn't it? And it's a wonderful thing that that's unusual. It is, and yet she was a beautiful person, mm -hmm. and she was a magnificent uh, truth student and understood the teaching that we espouse so much. And if she just could have overcome that little hurdle, and really I have to say that that was the one hurdle <laughs> that I think she needed to overcome in her life to really have, have true, true happiness, although she was a happy person. Yes, because what we teach is that we come into the family that we need to learn from, and whatever it is we, we need, then we learn from them. Mm -hmm. And if we look at it that way and we choose our parents, so if we look at it that way, we're responsible, not the other person. And even if the other person is responsible, they don't, if they don't know any better and they can't do any better, then they can't do any better. And the, not all parents are wonderful and loving. And during a whole course of a, an entire lifetime, uh, many parents change. You know, they're like they're harsh on, on their children when the children are very young. And then they're more lenient later on and then the child doesn't do what they want them to do they might become very harsh again. So it's never, a, a, it's rarely a constant. Mm -hmm. But life is so 
uh, seems so insurmountable for some parents, and they feel so frustrated. They don't know what to do. And so then I think they got off on the wrong track, and, and they aren't good. They're not all parents are good parents. But if we know that we chose those parents for a reason, for our character growth, and we wouldn't be the person we are today, wh whoever we are, if we didn't have the parents we did, if we didn't have the environment we did, and this is obviously who we're and what we're supposed to be, then I think that's an alleviating factor, don't you? It is. And we need to accept the fact that we are born into the circumstance and situation that we're born into or the, or the life experience that we have. And if there are hurts and unhappiness, then we just need to confront them, deal with them, and get on with yes. it. And as we say so often, helping people just get over it. Yes. Just get over it and, and, and move on with life. But so for so many, it's difficult. I recall one particular lady we were talking to for a long time, and she just could not let go. She could not forgive. And one of the comments that she made to me in the course of one of our sessions was, I can't forgive him. I'll never forgive him. I'm only human. What do you expect of me? That was her response to me. Yeah. And my response to her was, well, now part of that statement is certainly not correct. And that is, you're not only human. You are a spiritual <laughs> being, and because you're a spiritual being, you can overcome the human aspect, and a part of the human dimension for some of us is to hold on to some of these grudges and ideas, but the fact is that we can transcend them, mm -hmm. and that we can forgive, and that as we move beyond that human, beyond what we think we can do from a human standpoint into the spiritual reality of the fact that forgiveness makes good sense. And even though we think it's not fair, and we think people ought to suffer a little bit more <laughs> before they're forgiven, we ought to just forgive them for what's happened and get on with life. Yes, and if we could only realize that we're the one who's suffering if we're trying to make someone else suffer, because if we're working in that way, then we are, are suffering far more than the other, other person. There's uh, two ways of uh, looking at forgiveness, and one is, uh, well, there are many ways we can look at forgiveness, but uh, we can forgive people wholeheartedly and forget, mm -hmm. or we can forgive people and not forget. And actually, and it's not being very honest when anyone will say, well, I've forgiven them, but I can't forget, mm -hmm. because they're really holding on to a, an edge of the lack of forgiveness. And I, I know a lady who died in her 80s, and in her late 80s, and she prided herself on saying, I never forgive and I never forget. When someone hurts me once, that's it. And she lived that long a life, and yet that was her, her creed all mm -hmm. her life. Isn't that a weird thing? And that lady seemed to be a normal, wholesome person. And I've found her very lovely, a, a loving friend. But at her memorial service, there were very few people there because she had alienated so many people by priding her by following through on what she prided herself in doing. Mm -hmm. And so often too, when we forgive, we often think that we need to go to the person, get mm -hmm. down on our knees or do whatever we need to do, you know, <laughs> that we envision. But in fact, forgiveness is a personal right. uh, aspect of life that takes place within us. And so in many <laughs> cases, it makes sense to go and tell someone that you've forgiven them. But I can think of many instances in my life where I certainly have never bothered to pick up the telephone or write a letter <laughs> or go and see somebody and say, oh, gracious me, I, I have <laughs> forgiven you. But I forgave what they did. Mm -hmm. I forgave the hurt. And I may not deal with them in life. And I may mm -hmm. not choose to be with them in mm -hmm. life. And that's an important mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing to remember. That is that we don't always have to go and seek forgiveness. Yes. That we can give forgiveness in our hearts. And maybe in many instances, we ought not to deal with that person, mm -hmm. much like this lady that you're talking yeah, about. And we yeah. say, all right, this this hurt has taken place, and I'm forgiving you for it, and I'm not giving any more power to it, mm -hmm. but I don't have any need to see you or deal with you anymore. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing negative about that. That's right, but we get a certain clearance in our own consciousness and in our own body structure when we forgive, mm -hmm. and that's the important part. Yeah. And forgiveness and the aspects of, of creating a forgiving consciousness can strengthen and empower us. At this point in the program, we'd like to pause for just a moment and uh, make this offer to you of some information that you may find useful to use in your home and independent study. We would like to give you the opportunity to explore and discover in your own home the new thought teachings that this program is sharing with you by sending you a free copy of one of these booklets. Simply address your request 
to Confident Living at P.O. Box 7726, Long Beach, California, 90807. Whatever your dream, whatever your vision, you can reach it through Confident Living. We were just discussing the ways in which people can uh, avoid having to go and confront the people to seek forgiveness. I guess we could continue to talk about the fact that we really need to begin the aspect of forgiving privately and within ourselves, don't we? Well, it's the only way we really get through the forgiveness, and then we can ex expound to others and let that go out to other whoever it, it concerns. But it mostly concerns us because we're it's our own self-preservation. And uh, there's a wonderful uh, Christian, uh, there's a wonderful teacher, Dr. Caroline Mace, mm -hmm. and she talks about forgiveness as being one of the main aspects of a healthy life or a non-healthy life. And she says there's two things we need to do. Bring your spirit home, which means, well, you say it so beautifully, keep your consciousness in present time, which is the same thing for bringing our spirit home. We're keeping our consciousness in present time, isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. that so those are the two things we need to do in order to be healthy and strong. And she says the reason people don't heal is the reason is the reason people don't heal is because they don't do one or both of those two things, keep their consciousness in present time, only she calls it bringing your spirit home, and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You're very true, and I think that's absolutely true. Yeah. And I think that often when we have uh, physical illnesses, there is some point of need for forgiveness. And I'm not at all suggesting that everyone is sick because they need to forgive someone. Mm -hmm. But I think that when we are faced with serious illnesses, that it's a wonderful time to examine if there are needs to forgive in, in our individual lives. And then on a personal level, to go within and release those things. And again, don't bother yourself about believing that you have to seek that person out or even believe that you need to tell them. Because if you do need to tell them, you'll be guided and directed to that. Mm -hmm. But that's not, and I think often when people, and when we talk to people about forgiveness, I've unfortunately had several people that I've talked to about forgiveness who go out of their way to go and tell the person that they've forgiven when they really haven't at all. <laughs> it's, and it's just a matter of reinforcing the whole problem again. Yes. And so I think it's very, very important that that when we do uh, face illness, that we look at forgiveness as a part of the healing process. That's a very important point you brought up. And in a sense, what you were saying is, if we do that in a prideful way, then we're not really doing it well. And we're not doing it well, and we're doing it in a prideful way when we think we have to go out and seek the person out and tell them, I'm giving you this gift of forgiveness. And perhaps they don't even feel as strongly about it as you do as the person who's offering their forgiveness. Right. But if we forgive within ourselves, if we forgive the other person, if we let that issue go, if we let those words depart, a real burden is lifted from our heart and our mind, isn't yes, it? Yes. And very often people don't even know that they've offended another person. I know that's happened to me at various times. And as I've grown older, I've asked people, did I inadvertently offend you? because I wouldn't understand why they were acting the way they did. And very often it would be that the person was highly uh, involved in something that didn't concern me, and they were just um, into their own problem, which, again, didn't concern me in the least. But So we're really being very um, self-centered, self-important, if we think that everything concerns us, mm -hmm. because it, 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 it wouldn't necessarily be true. But if we have hurt someone inadvertently and we know it, then we need to say, I'm sorry. But if it's just some festering thing in our own consciousness where we're saying, uh, where, where we want to say it, then we can look within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that looking within ourselves is something that we don't do enough of, is it? <laughs> I think, and a part of our philosophy is the importance of in daily life and in spiritual life, in physical life and in emotional life, to constantly be aware of the fact that we live on the inner and yeah. that our inner presence and the united presence of our inner being with the presence and the power of God is what really sustains us and brings us the grace of life that we need. Yes, and you know, if we can remember that, we're much happier, all of us, and if we, then, then we don't get uh, tied up with why doesn't someone do this or that or the other thing to uh, make me feel better, to make me feel happier, to give me attention. Mm -hmm. And if 
if we can truly look within and see our own connection with Creator God, see, see how self-contained we truly are, and then try and reach out to other people and help help others, you know, not always looking to what's in it for me or do I want to do that or don't I, is not a good um, creed. It's how will it help the other person? And don't be, and I don't mean to be a do-gooder and go around doing good all the time, but it's just giving other people the benefit of the doubt and giving someone a lift mentally, spiritually, with a word or a smile or a thought. You know, so often just a smile means all the difference in the world in people's lives, and we never know what's impacted on, and what, how people have been impacted. And um, I remember after the death of my daughter in 1955, we were at the airport to meet my sister, and four nuns were at the table next to us and at the, in the dining area. And so those one nun came over and put her hand on my shoulder and just smiled at me. And it made all the difference in the world because she could see in my face great pain. But of course, she wouldn't know what that pain was. And it, it doesn't matter, does it, what the pain is. It's when people are feeling pain, if we can just reach out to them, we don't need, we don't have to know. We just, that love covers everything. It does. And a part of, of what you're saying that's so important is that we don't know everything. Yeah. And we don't know when people do things that hurt us. Yeah. We don't know how they've been hurt. We don't know how they've been damaged. We don't know what their life has been like or what has brought them to the point where they are. And we need to really be open to the fact that we need to have a loving state of consciousness and be willing to forgive others and forgive ourselves, which yeah. we need to touch on before we get away. <laughs> today. And yeah. that is that we need to give ourselves forgiveness because yeah. we've all failed in, in our own ways, mm -hmm. in different uh, relationships, in things that we've said and done and, and uh, failed to do mm -hmm. and uh, failed to say. Yes. And when we forgive ourselves, then we are able then to go forward more fully instead of being burdened. Mm -hmm. And if we have too many burdens, then we're too bowed down. But if we forgive ourselves as we go along, if we take things lightly, if we know that everything is going to be, that uh, hard times are going to be inevitable, mm -hmm. and there's no way we can live and not face those various disappointments, things that we might need to offer forgiveness for, then if we do, if we go in that frame of mind, then we're more forgiving. We're more able to truly empty out all that negativity. And also there's not that much negativity there to empty out because we're seeing, as you said earlier, m many people hurt others and they don't even realize they're hurting that person. It's the perception, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We go through life on a perception and the, we have, our perception is that someone needs to do a certain thing to help us. Their perception is they're really helping us by doing whatever it is they're doing. And then the never the train shall meet. And it makes for great unhappiness. But if we can realize that it's our own perception, not what someone is doing, mm -hmm. then, then we can forgive and we can go on and we can uh, really have a much happier life, and we can live into our old age with an unlined face. <laughs> <laughs> we, we go back to that fundamental teaching that we talk about so often, that we live in our minds. And yeah. our mind co is conditioned and responds in a certain way. And someone says something very innocent to us, yeah. and we're offended by it. Yeah. And they go on their way and never even recall that they've made the statement. And for 35 years, we <laughs> never forgive them for that. And, and not only do we not forgive them, but at every opportunity, we bring it back into our consciousness, mm -hmm. we bring it back into our mind, we bring it back into our emotion, and each time it gets stronger and stronger, it gets more damaging and more damaging, we get sicker and sicker, and uh, the outcome is, is just very, very sad. Yes, <laughs> yes. and we can, uh, Im it's uh, we're imprinting, we're imprinting all that negativity, we're imprinting our consciousness with darkness, and so if we don't, Im what we can imprint light or we can imprint dark, we can imprint the good things of life and the positive aspect. And people are called Pollyannas when they do that, but you know what? It's okay to be called a Pollyanna. It, it's certainly okay. So often our philosophy is called Pollyanna, but in fact <laughs> it's anything but, because what we do is take a realistic look at, at 
personal responsibility. And we have, a, I think, a genuine view of life. And it is a very positive one, despite what goes on. It is, everything that we see is positive. We see the positive in everything. And certainly the importance of forgiveness in living, in living that positive life is just fundamental to our teaching. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, all the things we've said today are very important in, in our thinking, but the most important part is that forgiveness lies within the individual, lies within us, the individual, and we can either forgive people and be miserable, or we can forgive them and be happy, and it doesn't necessarily impact that way in the other person's life. Mm -hmm. And and also, we need to do the same for ourselves. Yes. We need to forgive ourselves and <clears throat> yes. work towards it. It would be the same thing, that we can forgive ourselves or not. If we don't, then we're going to be bleak. And if we do, then we're going to be happy and up. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to life is what we choose to make it always, isn't, isn't it? it? Isn't it? Life is a series of choices. <laughs> and as we make those choices, we either are happy or we're not. We're either progressing or we're not. We're either keeping an even keel or we're not. Mm -hmm. And the choice is always ours and we can uh, and we make those choices either consciously or unconsciously and so often we're operating in the unconscious aren't we? Yes and I think very often when people are not happy in their lives and they're unforgiving it's because they have somewhat of a shallow life because those people who stay very busy don't have time to uh, just carry grudges because they're busy thinking of other things. And that's an important uh, reality of life that we all need to open our hearts and minds to forgiveness. We all need to be positive and affirmative and we hope that the information that we've shared with you has been useful and we look forward to seeing you next time. This program is a community outreach of Christ Church. Dr. Mike Costello speaks each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And Dr. Iris Freelander speaks on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. at the church. On Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., there is a meditation and healing service. Come and join us. You will be warmly welcomed.